Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you. Four years ago, Americans were experiencing high anxieties and great uncertainties. A deadly virus ranged, schools closed, businesses shuttered, Donald Trump mismanaged the crisis from day one, looking out for himself instead of the country. The American people responded to the crisis in leadership by electing new leaders. Thanks to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we reopened our schools, brought back our businesses, and restored our faith in the American can-do spirit. Thanks to Joe and Kamala, we reduced the price of prescription drugs, repaired roads and bridges, and replaced lead pipes. Thanks to Joe and Kamala, we are honoring our heroes in uniform and expanded benefits to over a million veterans. Thanks to Joe and Kamala. Make it in America is no longer just a slogan, but a movement that is bringing millions of manufacturing jobs back to America. For President Biden's lifetime of achievement in service of his country, we owe him a great debt of gratitude. And we are all grateful for one of the best decisions he made, selecting Kamala Harris as his vice president and endorsing her to succeed him. I often say that we are but the sum of our experiences. In the introduction of my memoir, I wrote, all my experiences have not been pleasant, but I consider all of them to be blessings. So has been the case with Kamala. Her experiences have prepared her for this moment. Kamala Harris is a true battle-tested leader, a district attorney, attorney general, senator, and vice president who gets things done. While Donald Trump has been bragging about how he overturned world, Kamala has been fiercely advocating for the respiration of reproduction freedoms. While Trump has been looking out for himself and his billionaire buddies, Kamala has been fighting to lower costs for all Americans. And while Trump falsely pleased ignorance of Project 2025, which in my opinion is Jim Crow 2.0. Kamala has been offering the American people enlightened proposals and visionary leadership. Having grown up in a parsonage, I often look to the good book for understanding and guidance. As Second Corinthians informs, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Our great democracy has been tested and so has the basic goodness of the American people. But our resolve to remain a great country, 
with freedom and justice for all will not falter. We will continue our march toward a more perfect union, united in our common purpose and emboldened by our resolve to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walz as the next president and vice president of these United States of America. Thank you and Godspeed.